I thought we'd look at an interesting filter inside of Topaz Studio 2. One I bet you don't use that often, and that is called the Bloom Filter. It's a really cool filter. I'm going to show you several different examples of how to use it. It's super simple to use. It's super powerful. We're going to take a look at uh, the documentation on that particular filter from Topaz just to see what it's all about, and then we're going to do some uh, examples of how it can work for you. I think you're going to have a lot of fun. Stay tuned and let's get started. So what the heck is the Bloom filter and what's it all about? What is Bloom? Bloom can help you selectively intensify the lighting in your images. Use Bloom to easily intensify lighting and images to change atmosphere or create that perfect dreamy sun-kissed look. Bloom makes it easy to strengthen subtle and extreme lighting effects alike. That's pretty cool. I'm sure you're asking yourself this question. Hey, when do I use Bloom? Use Bloom to increase spots of lighting in your image that you want to highlight. You know, like that sun, like on the image at the beginning on the intro. Perfect for portraits, wedding photography, and more. Bloom uses selective adjustment technology to analyze images and finds the bright points, which is really cool. It's only looking for bright points. The bloom adjustment increases light intensity locally without adjusting the lighting of the overall image. So you don't have to worry about layer masking too much with this particular filter because it's going to locally find those light spots for you. Easily add soft radiance to any image, which is really a nice effect. And you'll see it here shortly. What are the options in Bloom? And it's simple to use. There's three options here. Strength. The strength slider controls the overall strength of the Bloom adjustment. Increasing the value of this slider will increase the intensity of the overall Bloom adjustment. Threshold. The threshold slider controls what level of brightness will be affected by the Bloom adjustment. Increasing the value of the threshold slider will block out less bright objects in the image so only the brightest points are affected. And three, we have a size slider. The size slider affects the overall size of the bloom adjustment. Increasing the value of this slider increases how large the spread of the bloom effect around each subject is. All right, so now that we know what it will do, we're armed with this information. Let's go ahead and play with this filter. I'm going to show you a few different examples, how easy it is, but how very effective it is adding that nice glow to your lights and things like that in your images. So let's get started. I'm starting out in Photoshop, but you could work as a standalone app as well with Topaz Studio 2. So I went ahead and duplicated the background layer so I can work non-destructively. I uh, called it Topaz Studio 2. Now I'm going to send it into Topaz Studio 2. So this is that image I had on the intro, and I thought that we'd start out with this because the bloom filter is really awesome for these type of images like sunsets and things like this. And by the way, the images that I'm working uh, with today, I will link them in the description below so you can download them and follow along if you'd like. So let's go ahead and add the bloom filter and you're going to find it under the creative tab here. It's the very first one called bloom. And as I said, it's very simple. Look, there's three sliders here. We have strength, threshold and bloom size. Let's go ahead and play. Let's move some sliders around. So let's start out with the strength. We'll leave the uh, default settings here of threshold of 15 and bloom size of 25. It's probably a good starting point. It's probably why they picked those adjustments. So let's go ahead and pull up the strength here. And as you can notice, as I pull it the whole way up, it's only affecting the light areas around the sun right here in the water and in the sun. So it is locally targeting those light areas. So let's, uh, but let's bring it up a little bit, maybe halfway up here. Now let's take this threshold slider. Let's move it to the right and watch what happens. See how it wide, it's starting to widen out. And it's only affecting the lighter areas of the picture. All the lighter areas of the picture, when we move the threshold to the right, tend to get lighter. And as you can see, that's not affecting the dark areas, only the light areas. So you want to adjust that to where you think it looks nice. And again, how do you adjust these sliders? It's really up to you. Whatever your eye likes. And when you get to a point where you think it looks good, like I think right there looks pretty good, I'm going to stop. Now let's play with the bloom size. That's how far out that bloom is going to stretch. You see that? 
we can stretch it out if we want to. If you double click bloom size, you'll get it back to the default position of 0.25. So if we want to make that bloom size a little wider, we can go ahead and do that. And I might do that. And again, how far? It's totally up to you. Now let's look at a before. Here's a before and here's an after. So that's really cool. And then we can come back and readjust these sliders. If I have too much threshold, I can pull it back a little bit. Maybe somewhere right around in there. And then maybe work with my bloom size again. Pull it in a little. Again, let's look at the before and after. I always like to go with the before and after just to see if it's going in the right direction. And then the strength. Am I too strong here or too weak? Let's pull it back a little bit. Maybe, maybe right here looks pretty good. Here's the before and here's the after. So now we have that nice sunny look with that glow coming off the sun. A really great effective filter. And as I said, it works locally, so you don't have to worry too much about layer masking, although sometimes you might have to do some layer masking. But as all filters in Topaz Studio 2 have, you have this uh, layer mask icon if you need to do some layer masking. Again, here's the before and here's the after. That's our first example. Now on to the second example. And now we're on our second example, and I opened this up from uh, Photoshop as well. I'm not going to show you that each time. It'll just take too much time, and I don't want this video getting too long. So, I already have the bloom uh, filter opened up here. So, take a look at these light, light areas. Now, it's looking for the lightest areas here. So, I'm going to take this strength and start to move this up. And you see what it's doing? See how you're starting to see some light emanating from these lighter areas in here? Really cool stuff. See, I can keep bringing it up. Okay, so let's bring it, let's over exaggerate it a little bit, something like that. Now let's play with the threshold. See how, see how the threshold works? And maybe like this. I like this little bit of glow that's happening down in here. Now I think it's too strong, but I'm going to back the strength off. But now I'm going to play with my bloom size and see how I can widen out the, the glow areas with the bloom size or make them you know, not as wide, depending what we want. You want it to look realistic. So I'm thinking... Right around there looks pretty good. Now let's take the strength. I'm going to take the strength the whole way off. And now slowly build it up to where I think it looks really natural and kind of fun. Yeah, look at that. Now here's the before and here's the after. Isn't that cool? It just adds that nice atmospheric, blooming, glowing effect to your image. I think you're going to have a lot of fun with this filter. Now let's go to our next example. Here's our third example. On this particular one, I think it's a little bit too light, and maybe I can uh, make the effect more dramatic if I will start out. Let's add a filter, maybe the basic adjustment filter, and take our exposure, and let's pull our exposure back some. Yeah, you know, give it some more drama. Who says we can't use more than one filter? We can do anything we want. I like, as Bob Ross used to say, it's your world. You can do whatever you want in it. So let's do what we want. This is what I want. I'm going to darken it up. Now let's add our bloom filter. Okay, so let's click on bloom. And let's start with the strength. Let's pull up the strength. And look at look how it's just targeting those light areas. You know, these lights around here and so on. Let's exaggerate it a little bit, see what we got. Now let's play with our threshold. Do we want to take the threshold up? Or do we want to pull the threshold back? Nobody says we can't pull it back even more if we want to. And I might just pull it back a little bit. Here's the before and here's the after. Well, let's actually, that was the overall image, but let's just do the bloom. Here's the before on the bloom and here's the after. Yeah, you can see the atmosphere in there. Okay, let's continue to work with it. So I pull the threshold back. Let's take the bloom size and let's take it back. Okay. See, if I take it to the right, it widens out, which doesn't look so good. But if I take it back, remember, it defaults at like 25. So let's take it even lower. See how I can take it lower? And now I got the little bit of glow around the lights. See around this light? Like, let's check that out. See, the look at these lights when I turn it back on. This light and all these lights here. I'm going to turn it back on. See the little glow popping out of there? That looks really cool. So I'm liking the threshold and the bloom size. So as you can see, you got to play with these things, right? And now we can take our uh, strength and let's take it the whole way off. And now let's slowly build it up and stop at a point that we think looks really natural. 
And I'm thinking maybe right around there. So here is the before and here is the after. So the before and the after. It's a little more subtle approach, but I do like it. Hey, I just had an idea. Let's add another bloom filter. And let's look at this guy right here, because I really like the way this guy's standing here, okay? And let's take the strength of the bloom filter and drag it up. And let's just look at the guy, okay? We don't see much happening on the guy right there. But what if we take the threshold and move the threshold up? See, see how we're starting to see a glow around this man right here? And I'm going to pull that up to there. Now let's try the bloom size. And adjust it maybe right like so. Let's try that right there. And uh, let's get a layer mask. And let's invert it so it hides it from everything. And we're only thinking about this gentleman right here. So let's get a brush and pour a transparency slider the whole way to the right. And now let's see what happens if we paint that glow right in this area right here see what kind of effect we get hey isn't that cool let's uh let's go ahead and here's the before and here's the after kind of nice right it just adds a little extra glow on him just to draw attention to him now that may be too much so i can either take the strength back back but let's try something else let's take the opacity take it the whole way off and now let's slowly build that up opacity to where it looks kind of natural and not overdone because i don't want to look look fake i want it to look natural and real but isn't that cool we got that little bit of glow up here and then we have that glow on him drawing our attention to him now i'm done with it so hey who says we can't add a couple bloom filters to the same image well, there it is, the Bloom Filter. Isn't that a cool little filter for adding atmospheric glows and things to your images? And it only looks at light areas of your image. It's a fantastic filter, and I hope that you give it a try. Hey, if you have any comments, questions, or suggestions for me, please leave those in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you. Hey, and if you enjoyed this tutorial today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click that bell notification icon. Then anytime I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it.